So let's talk about formulas for compounds. A compound, again, it's a substance composed of two, two or more elements, and it's always the same relative numbers of atoms. So a chemical formula is a shorthand that tells us which types of atoms are in the compound and the numbers of each of those types of atoms. So when we write chemical formulas, we represent the atoms using the element symbols. Those are the ones on the periodic table. To indicate how many atoms of each element, we use a subscript. A subscript is below, see this three over here? A subscript is below the regular letters, just like a submarine goes below the water. And the subscript is put to the right of the element it's referring to. So here, SO3, the 3 tells us there's three oxygen atoms. If we only have one atom of a particular element, we do not write a subscript 1. And chemists seem to have a thing against the number 1. I don't know if it's just, we're just efficient, that's all it is. Why write a 1 if you don't need to write a 1? So writing the letter S tells us there's one atom of sulfur. If there was more than one atom of sulfur, we would write a different number, like two or five or something. If there are no atoms of sulfur, we don't write the S at all. So if you just see the element symbol, that means there's one. And here O3 tells us there's three atoms of oxygen. So the pesticide, known as DDT, paralyzes insects by binding to their nerve cells, leading to uncontrolled firing of the nerves. Doesn't that sound pleasant? Before most uses of DDT were banned in the U.S., many insects had developed a resistance to it. Okay, that's all just background, make the problem interesting stuff, or depending on your point of view, confuse the student kind of stuff. This is the actual problem here. Write out the formula for DDT. It contains 12 carbon atoms, nine hydrogen atoms, and five atoms of chlorine. So they're giving them to us in a particular order. We might as well just use the same order. There is a reason behind the ordering, but we're not going to really get into that. So carbon, what's the symbol for carbon? It's capital C. And it says 14. So we're going to write 14 as a subscript after the carbon. What's the symbol for hydrogen? Capital H. It says nine hydrogen atoms, so we put a nine here. Chlorine, Cl, and it says five. So that is the formula for DDT. When you're writing chemical formulas, you need to make very clear whether your letters are capital or lowercase, because it makes a difference. Um, C O and C O are two very different things. This one is the element cobalt, which is a metal. This is carbon monoxide, which is a gas and is not a good thing to be breathing. Very different. And so we have to make sure that we make our letters um, the right size and indicate capitals. Um, some, some people are in the habit of writing in all caps, and so they'll write like this. You can do that everywhere else, but not in your element symbols. Okay, lowercase a is like that. So don't use small caps in your, in your chemical formulas. The letter L is also a little confusing. You know, what, what is this guy? Is that a 1? Is it a lowercase l, or is it a capital I? I get around that by making my lowercase l's as a script l, my capital I's, putting bars on the top and the bottom, and then for the number 1, I use just the, the straight line for 1. So I would recommend that you do that. And also just be alert when you're looking at things um, not to confuse the lowercase l and the capital I.